The movie begins with a slow visual of the planet Mars from outer space. In one of the cities of Mars, a man by the name of Alec was sitting inside a bar having a drink. In the background, a man on TV announces that it's been said that there were only two days that matter to Mars. The first is the day that the Earth lay claim to it, and the second is the day that the Earth was driven from it. The man on TV continues to explain that Mars became free from the tyranny of the Earth Defense Force 25 years ago. As Alec sat on the bar listening to his life story being recounted, he felt a surge of irritation, longing to drown himself in a bottle simply. The man beside him recognized Alec from a picture on TV and excitedly offered to buy him a drink, much to Alec's annoyance. When the man poured him a drink and slid it over, Alex chose to spill the contents onto the floor. Enraged by the incident, the man accuses Alex of thinking that he was superior to everyone, leading to a physical altercation. The man's friends joined in and began to assault Alec. As the altercation persisted, a police officer and Alex's son named Jake arrived and despite explicit orders to the contrary, he became involved in the fight, pulling the inebriated men away from Alec. Once they were separated, Jake stood over Alec and informed him that he was under arrest for drunken disorderly conduct. Lieutenant Jake took his father to the station and allowed him to sleep off the drunkenness in his cell. The next morning, Jake takes his father home and sadly observes as he continues to drink. Upon returning to work, Jake arrives as Captain Ben was giving a briefing about an Earth ship that was destroyed in orbit and is now falling toward Mars. Following Ben's announcement that the ship is projected to crash in a disputed area, he instructs Jake and his team to proceed to the deep zone to assess and recover any EDF technology. Jack leads his sizable team to the location, accompanied by an Earth specialist named Tess who was born on Earth. Upon arrival, having endured heavy turbulence, Tess is visibly shaken and requires assistance from Jake to be hoisted up. The team cautiously enters the massive ship and begins to explore, while Tess and Jake follow a signal indicating ongoing activity. While tracking the signal, Tess and Jake unexpectedly encounter people dressed in all white in the distance, prompting Jake to cover Tess's mouth and experience a flashback to the day his sister was abducted. Instructing Tess to remain in place, he pursues the marauders and tackles one of them only to discover that it's his long-lost sister. Overcome with shock, Jake is left immobilized as the girl escapes back to her group. Upon their return to the station, Jake informs his captain about what he had witnessed, prompting the captain to anxiously call Alec and update him on his son's situation. Alec locates Jake at the bar and implores him to stop his futile pursuit, revealing that his sister is dead and then departs. Jake resolves to return to the ship for more information, but Tess uncovers his plan and pleads to accompany him. She explains that the ship's system is more intact than initially believed and reveals that the people that they saw only took one cylinder, emphasizing the importance of uncovering the reason behind it. After persistent persuasion, Jack finally relents when Tess informs him that she knows the whereabouts of the people in white and he agrees to take her with him. However, halfway there, he ejects her seat, informing her that he had contacted the station and that they'll be coming to retrieve her. In the city, Ben approaches Alec and informs him that his son has gone AWOL in search of his sister and the enigmatic all-white-dressed individuals. While Ben was inclined to believe Jake's story, Alec remained steadfast in his belief that the marauders had killed his wife, suspecting her of being a traitor to their cause. Jake lands his small ship in a remote area near the Marauder's territory and proceeds on foot. Hoping to find shelter for the night away from the cold, he sets up his tent and settles in, only to be ambushed by two Marauders, Corvallis and his nephew Leo. After conversing with them and revealing that his mother was a Marauder, he greets them in their traditional manner, which helps to calm the situation. During a conversation with Corvallis, Jake reveals that he's en route to Asimov in search of something that he's lost. The next day, Corvallis assists Jake in reaching Asimov, 
a city known for its degeneracy and high crime rate. After being separated from the others, Jake makes his way to a nearby bar and pays the bartender to provide him with the name of an individual with extensive connections. While waiting, he's taken aback when a gun is pressed against his head, held by Tess. Upon questioning her about why she had followed him, she explains that she had deduced the significance of the cylinder taken by the people in white, revealing it to be a device used by the EDF to power all their machinery and weapons. When Tess emphasizes that there is more at stake than just finding his sister, he expresses that his sole concern is locating Lyra, feeling guilty for abandoning her when she was taken. Shortly thereafter, the man Jake had been anticipating, the man Gorgon, arrives and inquires about what Jake was seeking. Jake asks Gorgon if he had supplied weapons to soldiers dressed entirely in white, to which the hefty man affirms. Jake then explains to Gorgon that notorious criminals like him often place tracking devices on their goods for resale, a fact that Gorgon acknowledges. When Jake requests the coordinates, Gorgon demands a steep price that Jake does not have on him. He attempts to intimidate the man, but the numerous soldiers reveal themselves, demonstrating Gorgon's substantial protection. Frustrated, Jake walks away, but Tess catches up to him and informs him that she managed to hack the drive and obtain the codes which will lead them directly to the soldiers in white. On their way out, Jake and Tess find Corvallis and his nephew being attacked and save them, gaining gratitude from the older man, and after saying their goodbyes, Jake and Tess depart. In the city, Alec reaches out to the leader of the Marauders, the Matriarch, who implore for his son's life, knowing that the penalty for unauthorized entry from one territory to another is death. The Matriarch regards him with pity, expressing that she no longer recognizes the man who once guided them to freedom. Despite his heartfelt pleas, the Matriarch informs him that she cannot spare Jake's life before abruptly ending the call. In a remote location, Tess and Jake track the signal to a small crack, which leads them to a surprising sight. Below the cliffs, they discover a massive facility with what appears to be advanced technology. Instructing Tess to remain on the cliff so she can escape if necessary, Jake descends to the facility, only to realize that it's an EDF facility. As he stealthily makes his way inside, he patiently waits until he spots his sister walking by and discreetly follows her to her quarters. Startled by the presence of a stranger, she initially attacks him but stops when she recognizes him and before they can converse, her door opens and a boyfriend enters, urgently calling for help, despite her attempt to intervene and inform him that Jake might be her brother. Once put in custody, Jake was shocked to discover Tess in the same prison cell as he was. Meanwhile, in the control chamber, Commander Staller, the very same person who had kidnapped Lyra, was speaking to her after she demands an explanation. Throughout her life, she'd been informed that her brother was deceased. And now learning that he was alive, she couldn't help but suspect that she was actually tricked all along. Once Staller was alone with Lyra's direct superior Adam, he confides in him that during the revolution, there was a high outbreak of cholera and their people were compelled to recruit from the fractions. He reveals that although Lyra wasn't the only one, she was one of the few who were specifically targeted. Staller tells him that taking Lyra served two of their purposes, one being revenge for what Alec had done. Leaving the command center, Lyra goes to the prison cell and tries to speak to her brother, and she tells him that she doesn't have any memory of her family. Hearing that she had a wrong perception of how she had been brought there, Jake explains that the people that she thinks rescued her had actually come into their house, killed their mom, and taken her captive. Lyra refuses to listen to Jake, calling him a liar and stopping their communication. She then speaks to Adam about what happened, but he refrains from telling her what the commander had revealed to him. In the prison cell, Jake and Tess manage to find a way to escape, but they're intercepted by Lyra and her soldiers. Just as they believe that they were about to be returned to prison, Corvallis and Leo suddenly appear, having followed their tracks, attempting to aid them in their escape. 
During the altercation, Tess is shot while trying to protect Jake, so they carry her out onto the roof where they commandeer a jet. As they're flying away, they witness a massive spaceship emerging from the ground, leading them to understand the purpose behind the stolen cylinder. The colossal ship initiates an assault on Red Faction City, causing widespread destruction. In the base, Lyra watches the destruction that is being caused by her people, which sparks flashes in her memory. Going back to her quarters, she remembers her parents' faces and the games that she used to play with them. Upon Jake's arrival at the colony, he discovers that it's too late, the damage had already been inflicted, and the council is pointing fingers at the marauders for the wrongdoing. The council declares war on the marauders, instructing their army to unleash their full might against them. Despite Jake's efforts to sway the council's decision, he's labeled a traitor and promptly imprisoned. When his father comes to see him, Jake explains to Alec everything that he discovered, telling him that he found Lyra. Alec then decides to believe his son, and they escape with Corvelius and Leo, and stealing a ship from the colony, they head out to the White Faction ship. Jake and his friends carefully board the ship, only to discover Staller in the midst of attempting to kill Lyra. Together, Jake and his sister engage in a fierce battle with the dangerous man, ultimately defeating him with a prolonged struggle. The group manages to flee the ship and reunite with Alec, who flies them to safety, but their escape is cut short when a missile from the White Faction ship causes their aircraft to crash. After ensuring the safety of everyone, Alec is reunited with his daughter, and tears of joy stream down his face. As they leave the ship, a sense of dread washes over them as they witness the White Faction ship targeting the terraforming machine, realizing the imminent danger facing their people. Alec makes a courageous decision, and without hesitation, he pilots his ship directly toward the menacing White Faction vessel, fully aware of the sacrifice that he was about to make. As the two ships collide, a blinding explosion engulfs the sky. The selfless act of heroism leaves a profound impact on all who witness it, forever instilling Alex's bravery into the annals of their history. Following the event, the two factions, both Red and Marauders, come together and agree that they would combine their forces and unite as one faction. After the ceremony concludes, Jake leads Lyra to their former home, where a flood of emotions and memories wash over her. And with that, the movie comes to an end.